It's 2025, the age of AI, but if there's one thing that's still a challenge, that is selecting hair. Today, we're gonna try some new techniques, some old ones, see if we still have to stick to the traditional methods or maybe AI can help a little bit. Also, I'm gonna introduce to you the concept of being clever through various examples from easy to difficult. So without any further ado, let us see what works, what doesn't and how to make it work. Let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download any of the examples and follow along, you know what to do, check the links in the description. We're gonna try the brand new select subject. If you're using the later versions of Photoshop, all you need to do is to go to Photoshop, settings and then image processing. If you're using Windows, it is under edit preferences. Inside of that, simply choose cloud and hit OK. And just to be sure, you can restart Photoshop so that that is the default. Now let's try the automatic method here. Choose any one of these three tools. I have the quick selection tool selected. At the top, select subject will show up. Let us click on that. With select subject cloud, it's going to take a while, but much faster than doing it manually. And we have a fairly good selection. Let us mask out the subject by clicking on this button. Now let's put her on a black background. By clicking on the adjustment layer icon, choosing solid color, choose black, it is already chosen, hit OK, place it under the subject. Looking at it, it looks perfect. You can start working with it. It just would work wonders. However, as soon as you zoom in, you would notice that this looks good. But if you have a look at the original one, if I turn off the mask by holding the shift key and clicking on the mask button, you see we had so much more details here. But once we activate it, see, all of those strands are gone. Similarly, right here, we had so much details. The hair is so darn clear. But after we turn on the mask, it just eats up a lot of hair. Now again, it is not a bad mask. But if you want absolute accuracy, let us try a different method. Quite traditional in sense. So I'm going to delete this mask by clicking and dragging it to the trash can. We don't want to apply it. Click on delete. Now let's go to channels here. Try the red channel green channel and blue channel. See which channel has the most contrast between the hair and the background. In our case, it is the red channel where the hair is much brighter and the background is much darker. Let's make a copy of it by clicking it and dragging it to this icon. Now let's play with it by pressing Ctrl or Command L to bring up the levels. You can also use curves here, up to you. Now let's take this side from the left to right to make the background absolutely black. Now, if we try to make it black here, it will become black, but it will eat a lot of the hair. So let us not go that extreme. We're going to go to possibly 10. That's fine. Most of the background is black. We are going to take care of the rest. Now we need to make the hair entirely white as much as we can without making it super harsh. So I'm just gonna bring the right slider to the left. 80 is fine. Hit OK. Now with this, we have quite an OK mask to start with and the good news is it gets most of the hair. If it gets extra, we can always take care of that later. Hold the control or command and click on the thumbnail of this channel to make a selection based on it. The brighter the area, the more it will be selected. The darker the area, the less it will be selected. Let's select the RGB, come back to layers and create a mask by clicking on the mask button. And this looks pretty fantastic. Still, the hair looks like it has been eaten. It's not that smooth. So let's work with levels again. With the mask selected, so that we make changes just to the mask, you can bring back levels by pressing Ctrl or Command L. And let's bring this back like so. And oh my gosh, we get all the hair back beautifully. So I'm gonna keep it this amount. Hit OK. Now just have a look at the hair. This is so good. But the mask is not perfect. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask. You see a lot of the extra areas are also now selected. So how do we remove it? There are a couple of ways. First is, let's take the brush with black as the foreground color. Let us set the flow to about 10% and change the blend mode to overlay. Keep in mind we are changing the blend mode of the brush. With overlay, what happens is if you have black selected, no matter how much you try to paint, it won't paint in the absolute white areas, but it will paint in grayish areas, allowing you to erase extras like so. I'm gonna increase the flow to 20%. There you go. Similarly, let's see if there are other areas we can remove. There you go, entirely gone. Let's take a look at these areas. Similarly, these areas. 
There are some ups and downs, so paint again, not an issue. See how beautifully it gets the fur of the coat. We need to take care of those areas as well. These areas, don't worry about that right now. We can use some advanced selections to take care of that. All right. Now, once you have done that, let's take the help of Select Subject Cloud to make it even better. After you have done with the brush, do not forget to change the mood back to normal. Now, let's make the mask invisible by holding the Shift key and clicking on the mask. Come back to the layer. Now, with the Quick Selection tool selected, click on Select Subject, beautiful. And now hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask again. This previews the mask and activates it. Take the brush with white as the foreground color. You can always press X to make the foreground color white. Paint inside the subject. You can stay away from the edges, it is up to you, but in this case, we can just freely paint. There you go. Make sure everything is painted carefully. Now we need to paint black on the outside. Press Ctrl, Shift I. Command Shift I to invert the mask. Don't paint on the edges, otherwise all the hair details will go away. Press X again to toggle between the foreground and the background color and paint that in black, like so. Now this is where we need to be really careful because we don't want to lose the fur edge details. Now we need to sacrifice some hair here. There is no other option. But apart from that, have a look at the mask. This is so darn good. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now come back to the layer and have a look at it. This is so good. <laughs> Nothing better than this. See how we cleverly combined both a traditional method and a modern method? Now the real test of a mask is when you put a background behind it. Now you always need to keep in mind in advance whether the new background would be dark or bright. In this case, a darker background suits best. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this texture, make it slightly larger, hit enter or return, and place it under the subject. So far it looks good, but have a look at the edge. It brings in a little bit of the blacks that was in the original background. So how do we take care of it? Time for us to be clever again. Why don't we try blend modes? So with the subject layer selected, let us name it, double click on the text, let's name it subject. Change the blend mode from normal to screen because we are trying to erase the blacks, right? And screen is a blend mode that hides blacks. And instantly, this gets so much better. Just have a look at the edge. So darn good. Look here. But the only problem with that is it also brightens the subject, but that's easy to take care of. With the subject layer selected, make a copy by pressing Ctrl or Command J. With this copy, let us change the blend mode back to normal. And we don't need this around the edges. So we can just select the mask, take the brush and start erasing it from the edge. Or if you don't want to disturb the mask, press Ctrl or Command G with that one layer selected. Now this group can have another mask. Click on the mask button, take the brush with black as the foreground color, just simply erase around the edge and have a look instantly, instantly. This gets so darn much better. Oh my gosh. See that? Beautiful. There you go. Similarly, I'm going to do it at the top. You can also do it around the edges of the jacket if that looks better to you. See all those little fur, everything is just so crisp and nice. And just with that, just by combining the concepts of Photoshop, looking at what we want, looking at the brand new background and see what suits best, we created such an incredible mask here. Now you might be wondering, Unmesh, this area is a bit greenish. We can easily fix this, not a big deal. So let's come back to this layer, which is responsible for that green. We are going to create a brand new layer at the top. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the line between these two layers so that this layer is limited to this one. Now let's take the brush, Take a sample from a nearby hair color area and just paint over that area. Now this is completely filling it. What we want to do is just change the color. So change the blend mode from normal to color. There you go. The issue is fixed. I know it's too much, so I'm going to decrease the opacity to about 70% and that just does the job. And you can use this to color whatever halo you want. Similarly, if you think these areas have less color, just paint over that and instantly it gets better. So many clever things you can do in Photoshop. Let us take a look at a simpler example now, but in reality, it is not that simple. And through this example, we'll learn how to be practical. First off, let us already create a background. So I'm just gonna unlock the background layer by clicking on the lock. Click on the adjustment layer icon, choose solid color. Maybe something like dark gray is fine. Hit OK once you're satisfied, place it under the subject. 
let us select the subject layer and we will try the modern method. With any of these three tools selected at the top, let's click on select subject. And if it does it in one go, we don't really need to use all the advanced techniques. Let us click on the mask button with the selection active. It looks good and for the most part, maybe this will work. The hair is okay, but there's just one problem, the color. And actually there's one more problem now that I see it. It's like it's a singular piece of hair floating in the air. So do we need to go back, use channels, select all that more and try to finesse it? Not really, it is just one hair. Select the mask, take the brush with black as the foreground color, just erase it out. Nobody's gonna notice, trust me. But what about the color around the edges? How do we tackle that? If we were to create a color layer, it will just apply one color over everything. But in this case, what if we could just target this blue color and modify that? We can try. Let's create a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and picking hue saturation. And again, we want to limit it just to this layer. So let's click on this button. Now with the help of the hand here, let's click on one of these bluish colors. See it has targeted the cyan. Take the hue and the saturation all the way to the right to make sure that you're targeting everything. Still, there are few areas left. So let's make the transition even more smoother and I'm gonna bring it a little bit to the left to select more. If you select too much, it's gonna select the skin as well. We don't want that. So something like this would work perfectly. Now double click on the sliders for hue and saturation. And for this background, we can just take the saturation away and Oh my gosh, it is fixed. So darn good. Let's take a look at the before. Here's the before. See all that color around? Here's the after. All that gone. Similarly here, here's the before. See all that color? Here's the after. All that gone. So there's no one technique that works for everything. We just need to use our minds. Now what if you have a super duper busy background? Can AI help? Let us try with this example. We are going to select again the quick selection tool and at the top, click on select subject. And with the active selection, let us click on the mask button. It is not definitely perfect, but in the last few years, I have to say, this has been incredibly better. Now let's create a darker background. In this case, I'm just gonna create a black background, place it under the subject. Now for basic work, if the image is much smaller, maybe you can use this. But if you do really want absolute accurate results, this is not all that good. So many of you might wonder, can we use AI to generate a brand new edge? Let's try it. Let's select the topmost layer, select the lasso tool here and make a selection around the edge. Right click outside the canvas, show contextual taskbar if you don't already see it and click on generate a fill. You can type in whatever you want, leave it empty up to you. I just typed in hair. I have to say it's not bad if you look at it from afar. Here's the first option, second option, third option. The only problem is as soon as you zoom in, it just starts to look like AI generated garbage. The quality is just terrible. It's absolutely not usable. And on top of that, if you try to enhance it by clicking on this enhance button, it just makes the garbage more crispier, but it's still garbage, at least for now. Let's take it away. The only way to give a better hair masking actually this is much better than those AI generations, is to manually paint a hair, especially when you have a busy background like so. So the first thing we do is take the edge away. I'm gonna do a small patch for you, like so. Make a selection, press Alt Backspace or Option Delete with the foreground color black. So you fill that with black, press Control or Command D. Now let's take the brush tool, select one of those hair brushes. If you don't have hair brushes, I have some gift for you. You can download those using the link in the description. Once you install it, it will be under Piximperfect hair brushes. Open them up. You can choose hair close from here. With white as the foreground color, just start painting the hair back like so. You can make the brush larger, smaller, up to you. Now this is just a small area I have done, but have a look, this is so much better. On top of that, you can combine it with others like the hair wide and just paint a couple more strands just to be a bit random. And on top of that, you can also use the single hair brush here, hair single, and just paint a few strands here and there like so. And finally, on top of that, you can create a new layer, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample from a nearby area and just paint some flyaways too. Again, take a sample from a nearby area and do something like that. 
Now this can get very time consuming, but it's the most accurate way of doing it. I've taken the time to finish it all and this is how it looks like. See how accurate it is? No matter how much you zoom in, this just looks fantastic. Now there's a complete tutorial on the entire process here if you're interested and unfortunately there is no other way when you have an absolute busy background and you want super precise high resolution hair masking. And if you want to deeply understand what technique to use when, this is the video to watch. So although it is 2025 and even though there are brand new technologies making hair masking so much easier, we still need to know those traditional methods and even manual methods where we manually paint in the hair to get the absolute best results. Now some of you might say, you can use that AI to do it better or this AI to mask better. We actually did a video about it where we compared 12 different platforms and Photoshop absolutely stood out as the best. I hope you enjoyed this video and picked up a few tricks and if you did, Make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.